This Pitch Breakfast video is brought to you by Spangler and Agins, attorneys for Charlotte's startup community. My name is Chris Sundy and my company is Good Roads. We're revolutionizing our nation's infrastructure through AI. I founded Good Roads to address critical problems I noticed while working as a, a civil engineer over the last decade starting back when I was a deputy city engineer in California. Our nation spends half of what we need to maintain our roads. Um, this is a, a critical problem that affects our uh, GDP and our economy. Pavement managers are the government employees who um, are responsible for dealing with this problem. And after talking with a lot of these folks about their jobs, we learned that they're, um, they're set up for failure. For example, uh, one city that we talked to waits up to three years to receive um, road inspection data from their consultant. And often it's unreliable data because it's based on visual inspections done by human inspectors. At Good Roads, we, use, we train AI to inspect the roads. Um, so we re give reliable data to, our, um, to pavement managers in three weeks. <coughs> Making decisions with that data is trickier. Pavement managers every year have to come up with a list of roads detailing how to repave each one. Um, for our beta testers, this process takes the entire summer. Um, and there, it's, the decision is so complex because it requires considering so many roads and so many variables that you need a data science degree to get it right. Um, unfortunately, most pavement managers are doing the best they can with Excel files they've created themselves. And at the same time, they're losing a battle to declining road quality. At Good Roads, that process takes just minutes and delivers better results. So here's how we do it. We've designed a low-cost, uh, small device that can attach to any vehicle. As the vehicle drives, it collects imagery, ride roughness, and location data. The imagery is run through our AI, which is trained to inspect the road and identify distresses like cracks, utility patches, and potholes. And it objectively rates the road. Our AI is based on technology developed at a university with a proven accuracy of 90%. The distresses and ratings are geo-referenced using the GPS that's built into the device. All this is then funneled into our web app. From here, pavement managers can input input a budget. <laughs> um, they can uh, experiment with different prioritization strategies, and then they generate a five-year paving forecast. They can view this forecast in our map. And with just a click, they can view details about each street and modify the streets that are selected for paving. What you just saw is the work of an amazing team that's building hardware and software that, unlike our competitors, doesn't require a computer science degree for our users to operate. Now I went full time with Good Roads this summer, and since then we've onboarded the data of three local beta testers, and we're negotiating our first two paid pilot projects. Uh, we make money through monthly subscriptions. And just as an example, I've, I've put up what uh, the cost differs based on the number of miles in a city. So these are annual costs that a city of different sizes um, would pay for that monthly subscription. This subscription includes inspection and rating twice a year and access to our web app. Pavement managers also get access to our forum and network that's exclusive for pavement managers. Now, we know that uh, the government sales cycle is long, and um, so we've designed our subscription and onboarding process to be um, delightfully simple for cities to onboard with us. All, all it takes is a quick signature from a city manager. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> um, we can vault from beta testers and pilot projects to selling 200 cities in two years with an investment of $100,000.
This helps us build our devices that we'll need, improve our AI, and hire a patent attorney to protect our IP. To summarize, we're trying to solve a nationwide crisis by using AI, data science, and innovative marketing. Our customers are the city, state, and county governments, and our product is the technology and data that their pa payment managers need to manage our roads with half the money. Last, you all can help us. Uh, introduce us to any uh, city council members, city officials, city managers that you may know in any city. We need those contacts in order to reach more customers. And if you want to follow our progress, sign up on our website. Thank you. Good, good presentation, uh, good use of time. I love the summary at the end, you know, this is who we are, this is what we do, this is what we're looking for. Uh, which, you know, you laugh, it's, uh, it's not always there. Um, I've got sort of a, I guess, a structure question about, do you have to pay people to put those things on their cars and drive around? As in the beginning, or, or are you thinking you're going to sort of crowdsource that down the road? Or I guess that's two questions, but the answer to both is yes. <laughs> okay. Um, some cities we're surprised to find actually want to use the city vehicles and drive around themselves. Some of the larger cities actually want to put it on fleet vehicles like garbage trucks. Some of the smaller cities don't have those resources, and so we offer we'll just build it in to to collect the data ourselves, which is kind of the point that we're at right now. But we do have plans to to uh, build a smartphone app where we can crowdsource, you know, essentially ride roughness data down the road. I I would. It seems like that would get really expensive in the be, in the beginning. You know, you've got to pay gas. You got to pay the people. You know, and uh, whereas when when you can get down the road to the point where you can get your customers to. You know, we'll come in, install these on six vehicles, and then you know, and all the data will be there yeah. um, uh, to, to to use. But yeah, I do think you would get a lot of consumer interest if you right. basically crowdsource it. Because I think about the street I was on in Myers Park, and we literally all got together and wrote a letter and took it to the city council to pave our road. So you know, I do think people really hate it mm -hmm. and would love an opportunity. But you know, I have a question. Why aren't you going directly to the like North Carolina Department of Transportation? Like, why go to all these little cities? Why don't you just hit up the state? I have spoke to um, um, NCDOT and Caltrans, the Cal California oh, DOT, okay. and they're they just basically what we're planning to do is prove ourselves in smaller cities because That's they're the yeah the the DOTs are very conservative and. and <laughs> Understandably so. This, you know, NCDOT. I have a good contact here for you with NCDOT. I love that. Yeah. I, I love that. Yeah. yeah they're just, actually the second largest DOT with eighty thousand miles, so it's, they're a big player in the industry. Yeah, and I think it's a huge need in the state right now. I mean, I think it's a massive need which you're trying to address. So. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, so it's more the bureaucracy. Prove it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's right. Okay. I'll turn it over. All right. So, so that device is. You said it's a SaaS model. So, are you charging? How many devices would a Mecklenburg County need to attach their vehicles? What's the cost of those devices, and who's paying for them? The devices are, are low cost. They're right now they're about three hundred dollars max. So, um, we estimate we can put about twenty on a vehicle and cover the city, uh, a city the size of Charlotte. Um, if for example, Charlotte wanted to put uh, the devices on their garbage trucks. That's 145 trucks, so the, the price goes up a bit. But it's you know it's in the tens of thousands. Um, and to, to your comment about paying for, for drivers, you know we've done the, the math and we started talking to like Uber drivers and Lyft drivers, and um, kind of surprised that it wouldn't be that hard. One of these devices can cover you know several hundred miles in a day if they're just driving around. Um, so it's about five thousand dollars to in it, like labor. To drive around a city the size of Charlotte. Which university did you work with? I'm sorry. Which university? Oh, the the uh, research was done at the University of Central Florida. Oh. Someone had one right here. Questions? In the back. What's what's in the device that affordable? Nothing really. So I mean, you mount the phone on that phone most of the time, right? 
I understand that the voice is on the top of the picture of the world. But I guess uh, you have GPS, you have access to Windows. So there's just plenty of pieces in the smartphone. That's something we're still sort of exploring also. You can get pretty low cost phones that have all of these, all of these in there. Um. Others? Anybody in the back room back there? Okay. Does your uh, AI system also identify bad lines on the road and things like that? that Not right now, but that's what we're, yeah, that's absolutely in our map, so to speak. Um, it also does signs on the side of the road, which is another thing that, uh, that cities need. Are you working with Jeff Stovall at the city? I, the ones IT? Are you working with Jeff Stovall at all? Uh, I have not met him yet, no. Yeah, you should, because okay. you know, he's on the board with CCI and college computing. I mean, there's probably, we could leverage the university here, too, for you as well. Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. Yes? Have you considered reaching out to, like, Duke Energy that's right here? Yes, that's a, that's a great idea because one of the, the big impactors of road quality is actually utility exactly. patches, utility trenches. Um, and, and so we, we hope to engage Duke. It, I, I think there's opportunity for them to be interested in engaging that way. Um, I have a question about, uh, it seems super important the other types of data that, are, are, uh, that help identify this model besides just okay, here's the condition of the roads, but there's, you, you mentioned traffic, you know, highly congested, and then also a rating system of like how important it is to the towns for whatever reason. How available is that data and, and, and how does that impede or improve your model? We absolutely use that data. Um, so right now we, um, we collect average daily traffic, so traffic data. The city of Charlotte has a lot of that data, but they still only cover the main roads, so it's like 30% of the roads. The other 70 is residential streets that they don't have. Um, so we built a model that estimates the, the number of cars that drive on all the rest of the streets for them, because um, that's absolutely very important to how fast a road ages. But we're also looking at collecting um, open data around you know, construction um, and construction costs and weather as well. Mm -hmm. Cool. Yeah. Time for one more. Waze is a data source. Do they have any? Yeah. I'm, I'm keeping close tabs on Waze, Uber. They, they all have these APIs. A lot of times they, you have to do it through the city. They only partner with cities. And the, the way they uh, provide the data is a little bit difficult to deal with for our purposes. It's good for like urban planners and that kind of thing. But I'm hoping that they change soon. I don't know what Uber is getting. Fantastic idea. Thank you. Thanks, Chris.